Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Everybody. To another chapter of A Court of Silver Flames. Written by Sarah J. Moss. And read by yours truly, Freewada, with the exclamation point for the added emphasis. We are here today, y'all, after a nice short last chapter. Uh, something that wasn't as spicy as spicy as chapter 26. Uh, <laughs> I do have a more uh, housekeeping announcement. I've gotten a new microphone. Um, I'm still testing it on my side. And I wanted to know on y'all's end, would you rather see the rest of the book be completed on the headset I'm currently using? Do you want to see how one of the new microphone sounds? I kind of need to tweak it a little bit still. I've noticed some... It, it picks up really well. But then I notice it sounds weird to me now because I'm used to hearing this. So just let me know if y'all want to see the rest of the book finished with this just so it's a little bit more consistent. Plus that way it would give me a little bit of chance to uh, test out and make sure this mic's tweaked to perfection basically as we move forward. Uh, just let me know. And with that in, with that in do, with that in store, I don't know. Words. Let's get back into chapter 28. As graceful as Gwen had been, Emery proved to be equally awkward and unbalanced. It has to do with your wings, Cassian said with such gentleness that Nesta, balancing on one leg and sweeping the other up behind her, nearly fell into the dirt next to Emery. Without full use of your wings, your body compensates for its off-kilter balance in ways like that. He nodded toward the ground-eating spill she had taken. Wind halted her own balancing. Why? The wings usually act as a counterweight, he offered a hand to help Emery rise. They're full of delicate muscles that constantly adjust and steady without us so much as thinking about it. Emery ignored his hand and stood herself. Cassian explained carefully. Any of the key muscles can be impacted when someone's wings are clipped. Gwen glanced at Nesta, who tensed, frowning. Gwen and Emery had fallen into an easy camaraderie within minutes. That could have been due to Gwen peppering Emery with questions about her shop as they'd gone through the opening exercises. Emery dusted the dirt off the legs of her leathers, looser than the ones Nesta wore, as if she were uncomfortable with the skin-tight norm. Cassian's eyes softened. Which of the healers clipped you? Emery's chin lifted, color stealing across her face. She met his eyes, though, with a level of directness that Nesta could only admire. My father did it himself. Cassian swore, low and nasty. Emery said, voice cold. I fought him, so his work became even sloppier. Gwen and Nesta kept quiet as Emery stretched out her right wing nearly all the way before it bunched and shuddered. So did Emery's face. I can't extend this one past here. She stretched out the left wing to barely half its length. This is all I can get on this side. Cassian looked like he'd be sick. He deserved to die in that battle. Deserved to die a long time before that, Emery. His siphons glared in answer, and something wild and wicked heated in Nesta's blood at the purge rage, pure rage in his face, his growling words. Emery folded back her wings. He deserved to die for far more than what he did to my wings. We are going to come to Valaris every day. I can get Maja up here. She's the court's private healer. Ryze had brought Emery, Nesta had learned, and would return her in an hour. Emery only went stiffer. I appreciate the offer, but it's unnecessary. Cassian opened his mouth, but Nesta interrupted. Enough chit-chat. If we only get Emery for an hour today, then walk us through the punching, Cassian. Let her see what she'll need to catch up to. Emery threw her a grateful look, and Nesta offered her a slight smile in return. Cassian nodded, and from the gleam in his eyes, she knew he was well aware of why she had interrupted. Gwen asked Emery, do you have libraries in Illyria? Another lifeline thrown. No, I've never been in one, 
The stiffness faded from Emery's posture word by word. Gwen retied her shining hair at the nape of her neck. Do you like to read? Emery's mouth curled upward. I live alone, up in the mountains. I have nothing to do with my spare time except work in my garden and read whatever books I can order through the mail service. And in the winter, I don't even have the distraction of my gardening, so yes, I like to read. I cannot survive without reading. Nesta grunted her agreement. What manner of books? Gwen asked. Romances, Emery said, adjusting her own hair, a thick black braid full of reds and browns in the sunlight. Nesta stared. Emery's eyes lit. You too? Which ones? Nesta rattled off her top five, and Emery grinned. So broadly, it was like seeing another person. Have you read Selin Drake's novels? Nesta shook her head. Emery gasped so dramatically that Cassian muttered something about sparing him from the smut-obsessed females before heading farther into the ring. You must read her books. You must. I'll bring you the first one tomorrow. You'll stay up all night reading it, I swear. Smut? Gwen asked, ca catching Cassian's muttered words. There was enough hesitation in her voice to make Nesta drop straight. Nesta glanced at Emery, realizing the female didn't know about Gwen, her history. Or why the priestesses lived in the library, but Emery asked, What do you read? Adventure, sometimes mysteries, but mostly I have to read whatever Meryl, the priestess I work with, has written that day. Not as exciting as romance, not by a long shot. Emery said casually, I can bring one of Drake's books for you, too. One of her milder ones? An introduction to the wonders of romance. Emery winked at Nesta. Nesta waited for Gwen to refuse, but the priestess smiled. I'd like that. Rise appeared in the ring precisely when he said he would. One hour, no more, no less. Red dirt and sweat covered Emery, but her gaze shone bright as she bowed to the High Lord. Gwen, however, stilled, those large teal eyes looking even more unearthly as they widened. No fear tinged her scent, but rather something like surprise, awe. Rise through an, an easy smile. One Nesta could have bet was crafted to put people at ease in his oh-so-magnificent presence. The casual smile of a male used, used to people either fleeing in terror or falling to their knees in worship. Hello, Gwen, he said warmly. Good to see you again. Gwen blushed shaking herself out of her stupor and bowed low. My lord! Nesta rolled her eyes and found Rise watching her. That casual smile sharpened as he met her stare. Nesta? Rise and... The other two women were glancing between them, the bouncing of their stares almost comical. Cassian just strode to Nesta's side and slung an arm around her shoulders before drawling to Rise. These ladies are going to hand your ass to you in combat soon enough. Nesta made to step out from under the heavy, sweaty weight of his arm, but Cassian clamped a too friendly hand on her shoulder, his grin unfaltering. Ryza's gaze slid between them, little warmth to be found in his eyes, but plenty of wariness. Little Princeling didn't like her with his friend. Nesta leaned into Cassian. Not much, but enough for a trained warrior like Ryson to note. A dark, silken hand brushed inside her mind. A request. She debated ignoring it, but found herself opening a small door through the steel, spiked barrier she kept around herself day and night. The door was essentially a peephole, and she allowed what she supposed was the equivalent of her mental face to peer it through it to the dark. Sparkling, plain, beyond. What? You are to treat Gwyn with kindness and respect. The thing that stood beyond the fortress of her mind was a creature of claws, scales, and teeth. It was veiled from sight beneath writhing shadows and the occasional passing star glinting in the darkness. But every now and then a glimpse of a wing or a talon shone. Mind your business. Nesta slammed the small viewing hole shut. She blinked, slowly registering Emery asking Cassian about tomorrow morning's lesson and what she'd missed today by leaving an hour early. Ryson's eyes glittered. Cassian's arm remained around Nesta, and his thumb moved over her shoulder in an idle, 
reassuring caress. Whether he knew of or sensed her silent conversation with his High Lord, he didn't let on. Ready? Rise asked Emery, that kind, lovely smile appearing again. Emery might have blushed. Ryzen had that effect on people. Nesta often wondered how Feyre could stand it, all the people lusting after her mate. Nesta pushed out of Cassian's arm again, and this time he led her. She followed Emery to where she was gathering her heavy cloak. So y'all come back tomorrow? Nesta asked. A glance over her shoulder revealed Gwen walking to the water station either to give the two males privacy or from discomfort at being left with them. Guilt pricked at Nesta for that abandonment, and she made a mental note not to allow it to happen again. Gwen had been fine with Cassie in these past days. She did not touch him, and he did not touch her, but she hadn't shied from him as she did now. Nesta didn't want to think about why that was. What scars had been etched so deeply in Gwen that two of the most trustworthy males in this entire land couldn't put her at ease? Ryzen might be arrogant, a vain bastard, but he was honorable. He fought like hell to protect innocence. Her dislike of him had nothing to do with why he'd proved what he had proved so many times. He was a fair, just ruler who put his people before himself. No, she just found his personality... That slick smugness. Grating. Emery answered, I'll, I'll come back tomorrow. Nesta angled her head. I had no idea tea and spices were that convincing. Emery smiled slightly. It wasn't only the gift, but the reminder of what they mean. What's that? Emery gazed, Emery gazed skyward closing her eyes as an autumn breeze rippled past. That there is a world beyond Windhaven. That I'm too much of a coward to see it. You're not a coward. You said I was the other day. Nesta winced. I spoke in anger. You spoke truth. I stayed awake that night thinking of it. And then you had Cassian deliver the spices and tea, and I realized that there is a world out there. A vast, vibrant world. Maybe these lessons will make me a little less scared of it. Nesta offered a tentative smile. Sounds like a good enough reason to me. Cassian watched Ryza's face carefully as Nesta and Emery spoke, and Gwyn drifted over to join them. Promises of books to be swapped filled the air. Ryza said to him, This is an interesting development. Cassian didn't bother to make his face look pleasant. Could have done without you giving Nesta a mental warning. Ryza's brows narrowed. How did you know I did that? The bastard didn't even try to deny it. I noticed the way she tensed, and I know you well, brother. You saw Gwyn and thought the worst of Nesta. She treated her and Emery with kindness. That's what pissed you off? I'm pissed off that you can't seem to believe even one good thing about her. They refused to fucking believe one good thing about her. Was it necessary to bait her like that? Regret glimmered in Ryza's eyes. Cassian went on. You're not making it easier. Let her build these bonds and stay the hell out of it. Ryza blinked. I'm sorry. I will. Cassian blew out a breath. Ryza added. Did you really feel you had to put your arm around her shoulders to restrain her? I don't want the two of you within three feet of each other. You have a pregnant mate, Ryza. You'd kill anyone that presents a threat to Feyre. You're a danger to all of us right now. I'd never harm someone Pharaoh loves. You know that. There was enough tension in the words that Cassian clapped his brother on the shoulder, squeezing the hard muscle beneath. Maybe drop Emery off on the other side of the house tomorrow. Give Nesta some time to sort her shit out. All right. The three females approached them. Rise opened his wings and said to Emery, Shall we? Emery took the hand. Rise extended. Yeah. She looked to Cassie and then to Nest and she said, Thank you. Damn if it didn't hit him in the heart. That gratitude and hope in Emery's eyes. Rise gathered her to him, careful of the intimate press of her wings against his body, and shot into the sky. As Rise soared above the house's wards, just before he winnowed to Windhaven, he had said to Cassian, I don't know what the fuck the two of you have been doing in this house, but it reeks of sex. 
Cassian snorted. A polite male never tells. Rise's laughter rumbled in his mind. I don't think you know what the word polite means. Thank gods for that. His brother laughed again. I told As playing chaperone would be useless. And that, my friends, was the end of chapter 28. You know one thing I caught from this? And, and it's early enough. You never know what can happen, especially in a book like this, how we're going to press forward. But I, I had seen some, you know, you can't keep yourself away if you're on social media from not necessarily a spoiler here and there, but from different perspectives. And one I saw, and, and feel free, not in a way like I'm not trying to, I don't want to start arguments with anyone, but feel free to give me your perspective on this if you do feel differently. Um, I saw where people were saying that like, Cassian was kind of like bad because he didn't have Nesta's back and that he was always like kind of buddy buddying up with Rise. And I was like, well, I guess in one sense he didn't physically stop her. He just had that mental talk with Rise about it. But he set a boundary. He said, hey, you're making her uncomfortable. You're doing this. And he didn't do it in the way that made Nesta feel un like embarrassed and you know, not without her own kind of bravado, because now he doesn't have to worry about, I don't know, you know, you, you, do y'all get where I'm kind of going, at least from my perspective? I think that he did a good job like that, where I saw that that was kind of the opposite. And so I'm, I'm kind of seeing some contradiction here. Let me know your thoughts, though. Is Cassian so far kind of been on Nessa's side, or do you think he's still more of a, with, with Rise and Azrael and in those veins is that, you know, is, is either one of those more problematic or the other. But don't worry if, if, if it's too much uh, to discuss all at once or if it may, be, may lead to arguments, no worries. Uh, but it's, it's just an eye-opening moment kind of seeing other perspectives uh, in, at different areas, not just necessarily the comments here. Y'all, make sure to stay beautiful, stay hydrated, and we will see you in the next chapter.